so we're going to talk about some suturing. So we have our old but tried and true chromic. You can do 4-0, 3-0. So indications for chromic are mainly going to be what? Wisdom teeth? Wisdom teeth. The main one, right? A lot of docs uh, are doing it in full arch as well. And so there's pros and cons to chromic. It gets a little sticky. So, you know, some people like it, some people don't. It breaks more easily when you're suturing. So again, that's a little bit of a hiccup, but people also like the way it ties down and how it dissolves a little bit more quickly. So then it doesn't bother the patients under their prosthetics versus some of these longer acts. So take it with a grain of salt. I don't necessarily use chromic too much in my full arch, more so than not. I'm using a glycolon or something like that, but a lot of very good surgeons use chromic in their full arch. So our next suture here is gonna be PTFE, right? Cytoplast, PTFE, whatever you wanna call it. Um, for the vast majority of cases, we're gonna use a 4-0 on that. Um, typically speaking, I'm only using this on socket preservation or single implants or like a quadrant based dentistry. I'm not using it in wisdom teeth because it can tuck under the tissue. It's non-resorbable. You don't wanna go in there and try to fish it out later. And if it's under a prosthetic, you know, it's, it's a nightmare to deal with sometimes. So at the end of the day, you don't necessarily wanna use your cytoplast or PTFE on that either. Um, so the next one we're gonna have over here is gonna be our glycolon. Do you have a preference on your 4 versus 5 -0? Uh, not for me, no. No? Um, when you watch Doc suturing with it, do you feel like they do a better job one way or the other? Or? Um, I've only watched you, and so I would say 4-0, uh, you maneuver a lot better. Okay. So, yeah, I, I have a preference to the 4-0. A lot of people use 4-0 and 5-0 interchangeably. There are some Docs who only use 5-0 for their full arch, and it's totally fine. What I find is, is the 5-0, it's a little thin. So then when I'm going to suture with it, it sometimes looks like spaghetti, kind of all mixed up together. Cause like it just all bunches up. The 4-0 is a little thicker. It's a little easier for me to handle. So with that in mind, I'll usually suture uh, the vast majority of my cases with glycolon. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm doing like a single site, even if I'm doing just really anything, glycolon can be used very versatilely in a lot of places. And it's not that expensive anymore. So at the end of the day, it's like there's no right or wrong, but this is a long lasting, suture it's going to stick around for anywhere from four to six weeks it's going to tie down nicely but what i find on glycolon that if you do your knot backwards by accident you're going to see a little loop forming and it's going to unwind more quickly mm -hmm. so you have to be very intentional with how you tie your glycolon down if you're tying down your cytoplast it ties down really nice you can actually screw up your first knot and then pull down really firmly and the, the, it's so slick, it'll, it'll tie down more. So you can cinch down your knots really easily with your cytoplast. The chromic's not that forgiving. Once that first knot kind of forms, you're not really gonna cinch it down any further because it's really sticky. The glycolon also, you can probably cinch down a little bit better, but you have to be careful. You have to make sure those knots are getting tied the right way and in the right sequence, or you're gonna have it unravel. And then my least favorite, but <laughs> still has its place, is your 6-0 polypropylene. This is non-resorbable. It is very thin and it's gonna be more for your tissue grafting cases. So if you're doing connective tissue grafting, free gingival grafting, anything like that, that's where I use it. I tend not to use it in other, other places. Maybe if I'm removing like a lipoma or any type of thing from the lip and I'm suturing a very fine area, um, then I would use that. Do you see us use it anywhere else really? No, this is more for like cosmetics. Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. What about, I think we used to use it over blocks, right? Uh, yeah, we used to. We used to use it over blocks and now I just use my glycolon over the blocks and I don't really have incision line opening. But again, maybe have a box of it. I'm sure the shelf life is really long and it's a good suture for really finesse moments. And the last thing I love is the, um, the periacryl glue. So if I'm worried about incision line opening, an incision line opening can kill some of your surgeries. The glue that goes over the top of your sears really, really well. You make sure the tissue is a little dry, apply it in these areas, and it holds the areas together really nicely in cases where you just can't afford to lose any ground at all. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a nice adjunct to have um, you know, in your armamentarium to really keep your sutures closed. I would say if you do put this on, make sure you're not uh, then putting gauze in the patient's mouth. Um, yeah. Because if you rip the gauze out, then you can only imagine what's going to come afterwards. Yeah, that's good pro tip. Make sure anything that's touching the tissue is wet or damp. 
because it'll stick to the glue once it sets. And then at that point, you're just doing yourself a disservice. So you gotta be done, you gotta be wrapping up the day and you make sure that the cheeks are also wet and not dry because their cheek can stick to your suture and then they start to stretch the muscle and it can pull the stitches open. So you gotta be very intentional with where the glue goes and then how you kind of support the surrounding facial structures to make sure that it stays nice and clean. So now we're gonna talk about how much to use, okay? Now, every once in a while you make a mistake, you gotta use extra, but what we want you to ideally focus on is trying to use as much here as you would in private practice because we want you to be conscientious of um, how this is gonna look with your overhead and how you run your business. Now, at the end of the day, from an educational perspective, if you gotta use more, you gotta use more, right? If you gotta get it right, you gotta get the knowledge, you gotta get the tactile sensation and the muscle memory to get this all done appropriately, yeah, that's great. But ideally, for a wisdom tooth case, you should be able to use one pack of Chromic. And quite frankly, I barely suture my wisdom teeth anymore. Um, how often do you see me suture wisdom teeth? Mm, not very often. Um, not I very. can't even remember the last time you did suture wisdom teeth. Yeah, so I would say that's gonna be, um, you know, as a result of multiple things, right? Case selection, uh, flap design is huge. If you can get conservative with your flap design, you're not gonna suture your cases. Well, what's gonna happen when you don't suture your cases? Um, overhead goes down, your procedure time shortens, and then sometimes patients actually feel more pain with suturing because it's just the tissue is tied in and the muscle flexes and it pulls on the suture. You want a little bit of flexibility and mobility in that area. But again, coming back to use of Chromic on wisdom teeth, one packet I think is adequate. And if you're gonna use it in full arch, you're probably gonna go through two packets, right? One for the upper right, one for the upper left, uh, or you can buy a Chromic that's insanely long. And then at that point, it's all the same price, um, plus or minus, and then you can use that. If you're not using it for full arch, just get your standard size of Chromic because you have all this excess. It just becomes a jumbled mess of suture. For socket preservation, um, I think you should really only use one packet of this. Um, what are your thoughts? One packet, yeah. One packet's adequate. Mm -hmm. um, how much are we using on the, the glycolon? Um, I'd say for glycolon, if you're doing a double arch, I give him four. Mm -hmm. uh, single arch, I give him two. Okay, perfect. And then if I wanted to tie it down with one extra suture and I got like a bunch of excess tissue, you can grab one Chromic and do a couple interrupted in between if you like. Mm -hmm. And then polypropylene, if you're doing a soft tissue case, you're probably gonna only use one of them. Uh, if you need to, use as much as you need because if you're that finesse type of work with peri periodontal type of surgery, you need to make sure your suturing is pristine and if you need to, cut out the sutures and redo them because this is where there's really no wiggle room and you really have to you know, stick the landing with your suturing. Periocryl, I only really use one per arch, so mm -hmm. if you're gonna glue your upper and lower, then use two. However, are you really gonna get an incision line opening on your upper arch? Uh, very rare. Super rare, Patient, right? you know, the only one that I've seen open, um, we ended up having to do some Botox for uh, around these areas yeah. for grinding and all that stuff. Yeah, vast majority of the time it's gonna be incision line opening on the bottom. That's where you're gonna wanna glue it because the biotype or phenotype of the tissue is very thin. So I'd say just allocate for one of those on your lower arches. Mm -hmm.